Sometimes picking a cruise ship to sail on feels like picking your favorite child. You don't have one, but sometimes you prefer one over the other for different reasons. It can be daunting to choose between different cruise ships for a vacation, and even I can sometimes find myself second-guessing that decision. I recently sailed on one of Royal Caribbean's smallest cruise ships for a few important reasons, and it provided me an affordable cruise to the places I wanted to visit, even if it didn't have all the bells and whistles of other ships. Radiance of the Seas is the oldest Radiance-class cruise ship, having launched on June 15, 2000. Cruise ships reaching that 20-year plateau are becoming far more commonplace than it used to be, so age isn't the factor it used to be in evaluating how good a cruise ship is. Radiance is also on the small end of Royal Caribbean's fleet. She has a capacity of 2,501 guests and a length of 961 feet. Now, compared to new cruise ships like Wonder of the Seas, she's in a completely different category or cruise ship layout and feel. There's no Royal Promenade, there's no Flow Rider, there's no Boardwalk or Central Park, there's a Centrum and other areas on board, but it definitely feels different than those big Royal Caribbean cruise ships. Ultimately, I picked Radiance of the Seas because it was the right cruise ship for what I wanted, an inexpensive getaway cruise to the ports of call in Mexico from a convenient home port. No doubt you've struggled also maybe finding some last minute deals out there because it seems like a last minute cruise deal is getting harder and harder to find because of rising cruise prices. Royal Caribbean is experiencing exceptional demand, and that means there's less incentive to offer a lower price. I booked this cruise exactly 31 days before I set sail on it and got a Category 4D balcony stateroom for $1,390.79, including gratuities, plus $50 on board credit. This is a five-night cruise that visited two ports of call in Mexico, Costa Maya and Cozumel. I could have gone with a Category 2V inside cabin instead, for $1,063.79, including gratuities, and $50 onboard credit. But I decided that the extra $300 was worth it to get a balcony and have more space. Now, I didn't set any records for having the lowest cruise fare ever, but considering I booked this cruise just a month before sailing, I think it's a pretty good price for a last-minute cruise in 2023. At the time of booking, there were very few options that worked for that time frame I wanted, but more importantly, I was going to pay more for them as well. Cruises from other ports around Florida had higher prices and worse cabin choices. My cabin had lots of space, and the private balcony was so nice to have on the two sea days. I was in cabin 8516, located near the forward elevator bank. There was no noise issues to contend with, and it was a very convenient option because it was nice to have the elevator so close by. Not only does a balcony cabin get natural light from the sliding glass door, but I was able to spend time on my balcony with the fresh air or a view in my room if it got too hot out there. Now, Radiance of the Seas is spending the winter season in Tampa, Florida, and it's one of my favorite ports to sail from because of how convenient it is. Tampa does not get the bigger cruise ships that you'll find in South Florida or even across the state in Port Canaveral, but it's such an easy process to cruise from there. Besides the fact that I can make the drive in a little over an hour from my house, the port is set up with valet parking, which you don't find in any other cruise port. It's just $15 more than parking in the garage. So worth it. The terminal itself is really a no-frills embarkation experience, and while it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the new cruise terminals in Galveston or Terminal A in Miami, it works, it's quick, and it's easy. I arrived for my noon check-in time, which I picked from the Royal Caribbean app, and there were no lines at all to contend with. All they had to do was check my paperwork and send me on my way. While the embarkation process is just as easy at other home ports, thanks to Royal Caribbean's utilization of the app to speed up the process, the folks working in the cruise terminal have done their best to ensure everything goes smoothly. Now, given how old Radiance the Seas is, I was surprised how many dining choices it had. There are four specialty restaurants on Radiance of the Seas plus Chef's Table. You've got Chop's Grill, Giovanni's Table, Izumi, and Samba Grill. When you're choosing between a small or a big ship, oftentimes the variety of dining choices is a consideration because big ships are known for having more. However, with four specialty restaurants in addition to the complimentary wind jammer and main dining room, I was impressed by the variety. Whether you decided to eat at any of the specialty restaurants or not, it's really nice having those options there on a ship that is of Radiance of the Seas age and size. A major reason I wanted to go on Radiance of the Seas was for the opportunity to sail to Mexico. Anecdotally, it seems like there are just far less cruises going to Mexico than the Eastern Caribbean, or at least I keep subconsciously choosing Eastern Caribbean routes. I wanted a cruise that went to the Western Caribbean so I could review two of my favorite beach shore excursions of all time, Maya Chan in Costa Maya and Paradise Beach in Cozumel. Plus, I really enjoy cruises that go to Mexico because of the food that's there. At home, I eat plenty of Mexican food, but there's nothing like getting the real thing in Mexico. 
And the food in Mexico is better than the food elsewhere in the Caribbean, in my opinion. I enjoy the beautiful scenery there as well, but Mexico's food is my favorite thing among any Caribbean port. An additional benefit to Radiance of the Seas was the amount of time we had in port. In both Costa Maya and Cosmel, we were docked for the full day. As an example, in Costa Maya, we were in port from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., whereas Mariner of the Seas came in on the same day, but did not arrive until 11 a.m. Now, they did stay till 7 p.m., but in my experience, so many businesses close up once you get to around 5 p.m. Being that Radiance of the Seas was closer to Tampa, our distance was shorter than a cruise from Eastern Florida, and I loved having a full day in each port of call. I was also blown away by how good the internet connection was on Radiance of the Seas. If having fast internet on a cruise ship is important to you, Radiance of the Seas is a great choice. Royal Caribbean's investment in Starlink has been a real game changer, especially now that they seem to have optimized their networking to better handle the traffic. I was first blown away by how well Starlink worked when I was on Serenade of the Seas last month over in Canada and New England, which is another Radiance class ship. On Radiance of the Seas, the internet was almost as good as Serenade, but so much better than just a few months ago when I was on other larger ships. As someone that relies on the internet heavily, it was so nice to have a reliable connection for the entire cruise. Among the Royal Caribbean fleet, when you're talking about big ships versus small ships, I feel like the Radiance class is the exception to the rule. When we talk about big ships versus small ships, I think I'm always thinking about in my mind, the Vision class versus like the Freedom class or the Oasis class. But the Radiance class are certainly small ships, but there's just something about them that really endears them to me. Maybe it's because there's so many great views all around. You've got glass everywhere being able to see the ocean. Maybe it's because there's more dining options than you'll find on a Vision class ship. Or maybe it's because the layout is just so well optimized. Now, while I'm definitely a big ship guy at heart, and if given the option or the choice, I would definitely prefer to go on a ship that has a Royal Promenade and has tons of activities and things to do, for a port intensive itinerary, a cruise that goes to a lot of different ports that does not require you to be as reliant on the ship to provide entertainment, it was great. Now, there are drawbacks to the Radiance of the Seas, right? The entertainment, the shows that you see in the theater were lackluster at best. There were great entertainers in terms of music and performers, and I had no problems with them at all, but there's no plot to the shows. They have, you know, average comedians to go in. There was a juggler, and that's a pet peeve of mine. I hate jugglers and musicians. We'll never go to any of them. To be fair, those are also shown, by the way, on bigger ships as well. But you're not going to be blown away by the entertainment. You're not going to be blown away by the activities on the top deck. There's a rock climbing wall, certainly, and a really kitty pool, if you want to call it that, with a slide. But there's no floor rider. There's no zip line. There's not an indoor area for kids to play in. You know, there's a basketball court and the basics. But again, for what I was looking for in this cruise, it certainly fit the bill. And when I went on our sister ship, Serenade of the Seas, to Canada and New England last month, we were in port most of the time. So having limited sea days makes it a lot less of an issue not having as many bells and whistles on a ship like Radiance of the Seas. And of course, there's the price. When you're looking at Radiance of the Seas and you're comparing it to you know, an Oasis of the Seas or Wonder or Icon of the Seas, you're gonna have orders of magnitude difference in price. And money isn't everything, and I don't ever advocate chasing the lowest possible price, but if you're willing to have those trade-offs and most importantly, save some money along the way, it can be a really compelling option. Let me know in the comments below, what are your thoughts on the Radiance class? Have you sailed on Radiance of the Seas itself? And what are your thoughts on choosing big ships versus small ships? Let me know in the comments below. While you're below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.